I'm gonna put it in your hands. Welcome to the Michael Klein. That's right. Pickle Tato. So what I know about you is now I know that you were born in Kentucky mm -hmm. and you moved to Fort Rucker and then you moved here. <clears throat> and by all accounts, everyone that we have mutual friends with thinks you're a great guy, loves you to death. And I've seen that also. Um, so with that being said, were you always the type of person that had a demeanor that was easy to get along with and did things for people? and Or did you go through a period where you were a big hellraiser? Well, your characterization of me is um, being easy to get along with and everything. I don't know if that's true or not, but <clears throat> so there was a no. I'm two totally different people from how I grew up and how I am now. Um, so growing up, you know, I was bullied pretty hard. Why, you think? Your size? You're no, I was, no, no, no. I was a real small kid. And not realizing at the time, <clears throat> see, I don't know. We can go back pretty far, but. But you're in Kentucky till the age of what? Uh, 20, well, 20. I turned 21 in so, Marine, Marine Corps boot camp. So elementary school is so, through fifth or sixth grade. What yeah, was, so I, my, my parents split up, and I lived with my mom, and I was a straight-A student, you know, got along with all my friends in first, second, third, and all, all that. I was, and I was very competitive with my academics, you know. I always wanted, when we had a test, I wanted to be, not only did I want to get every answer right, but I wanted to be the first one to turn my work in. And I would watch everybody and see where they were at, and I was like, I know this, I know this, and that, all right. Very competitive in academics. And um, and I don't think it was just academics. It was just competitive, right? So, Do you have siblings? I did. I had two older sisters. Well, I have three. One was a, um, you know, my, I had an older sister that was a from a previous marriage from my father. I didn't grow up with her at all. I mean, I, I know her, but um, got close to there for a little bit. But then I went to the military, and, you know, so I don't really keep in too much contact gotcha. with her. But uh, yeah, two older sisters. One's five years older. One's four years older. Um, and grew up in a all female, <laughs> you know. Uh, growing up, like I said, you know, live with my mom. Everything was fine because you know, from the time of kindergarten, I always grew up with all these kids up to sixth grade. Well, <clears throat> me and my sister, sisters, got in a fight about something, and I made a comment about I'm not going to go live with dad, and not really meaning it. And I was just wanting to piss everybody off. And my mom, she's like, do you really do you really want to live with your dad? Well, my mom, not knowing at the time, my mom and dad had an agreement. Hey, the kids are going to go wherever they want. You know, we're not going to fight about this. And she, she's like, well, you know, if that's what you want, I really don't want you to go. But, you know, I'm not going to stop you. I'm like, yeah, I'm going. And I was just, I was waiting for somebody to, no, you're not going to. I'm like, oh, okay, well, fine, you know. Did it get the desired <laughs> effect that you wished No, for? I left. <laughs> no, I went and lived with my dad. Not that that was a, not that my, listen, my dad was one of the best guys, that, you know, character, you know, and everything. He was a really good dude. I just don't think he was ready to, his parenting style was a lot different from my mom. My mom was a disciplinary. She kept me in line. My dad was like, well, he'll learn from his mistakes. And I pretty much did whatever I wanted to do. And how so, old was this? How old were you? Oh, man, probably 11, 12 Probably around 12 or so. So anyway, when I moved in with my dad, my dad was just as poor as my mom, but with my mom, it really wasn't noticed as much. But when I was with my dad, it was, he was he was real poor. And so when the first day I pulled up to the school, you know, it was game on. I mean, from day one, like, who's this new kid? And So different school. Totally different school. Totally different part of the state. And, um, so from that day on, it was trying to find friends and trying to find this or whatever. And so I got harassed and fell into a very, I, you know, to this day, I think they were good guys. It was just just a bad group. So before you changed schools, <clears throat> life was good. Yep. Not getting bullied. Nope. Everything was good. Not at all. So this is a big pivot in Absolutely. your life. Okay. 
B- very big pivot. Um, so I got in with a, I don't call them a wrong set of friends, but a bad set of friends that had, you know, kind of in the same boat as me, you know. And so I fell into a lot of drugs, um, you know, if somebody says something to me, I always think I had to defend myself and everybody was always bigger than me and I was always getting my ass kicked just for whatever reason. It didn't have to be much of a reason. It was just, but I was always running my mouth, you know, you know. Did you ever get beat up by a girl? Uh, no, it didn't get okay. that bad. <laughs> didn't get that bad, <laughs> but I didn't get beat up a lot. And um, Did you ever start any fights? To- uh, probably, probably. But what? So of this period, what is the one main memory that you have the one main memory i have is i had this english teacher um her name was miss capsa she's probably dead but hopefully she's not and maybe one day we'll hear this and how much she fucked me up she um i would goof off in her class you know just you know trying to be funny because that's the only thing i knew what to do is you know try to be funny you know right just to get a reaction from people and she you know she got tired of it probably and um like I said, everybody was always bigger than me, and this was probably my it was my freshman year. So back the school I was at, the freshman was in the high school. A lot, of, a lot of you know freshmen are with the middle school, but this one happened to be you know freshman up to senior year. And I was in Miss Caps's freshman English class, and one of one of the many many times she said, "Billy, get out in the hallway," you know. So I'm like, ah, you know push a desk or whatever on my way out to the hallway. So I get out to the hallway and I'm just standing there, you know, well, here comes these two football players. One of my members, Greg Long, or I'll name him. He's dead um, from drug overdose. But back then he was a um, very popular football player. Right. I think he was the quarterback, if I remember correctly. And another big ass dude, there was like two or three of them. I can't remember the other guy's name, but I can see their face. I'm sure if I asked my wife, she went to the same school and she was a cheerleader. But anyway, um, I know, I know. So they come walking down the hall and I'm so I'm just kind of like against the locker, just kind of minding my own business. Well, as they're walking down the hall, they stop and they look at me. Like, what are you doing out here? I'm like, uh, you know, I'm just standing out here. I'm like, well, Miss Caps had told us that, you know, you're causing troubles in her class. And I'm like, what? <laughs> So she deployed the goons. To she take care deployed of the goons to, to whip my ass in the hallway. Man, and so they didn't whip my ass up, not like beat me up, but they pushed me around, shoved me against lockers, and you know, putting their finger in my face and pushing my head against the locker. If you don't straighten your ass up, we're going to come back. Blah 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 blah. And I'd gotten my ass kicked, kicked plenty of times uh, up at that point. That didn't bother me. The, that you know, I could handle that. No big deal. My biggest disappointment was I had this grown adult. Who, right. fucked, who fucked me over. <clears throat> yeah, that's not cool. Shoved me out to the wolves. And I'm like, this is a damn teacher. I mean, hi. not just the wolves, but she probably told them to do that. Absolutely. <clears throat> so what'd your dad do? I didn't. I, so all this stuff that happened, I never told my dad about anything. What do you think he would have done? Oh, you know, I really, at that time. Well, what's the reason you He didn't probably would have thought it was my fault. And the reason being is because I probably brought a lot of that shit on myself. But doesn't everybody go through that? period where you just like aggro <laughs> you know you against the grain well mine was pretty bad and, you know and i can't compare myself to anybody else of what they went through but i can just tell you my story it was a you know traumatic effect or whatever but from that point on i was like high school is a bunch of fucking bullshit i don't want to have nothing to do with this i got teachers who are fucking assholes right. you know, just coming up you know of course i you know I would think a teacher would want to help you out to try to, hey, you know what you're doing? You're on the wrong path. Let me try to, rather than, I'm going to send some three dudes that whoop your ass in the hallway. And what city is this? In? It was uh, Erlanger, Kentucky. Erlanger, Kentucky. A place called Lloyd High School. <clears throat> so that was a pivotal point. So that just lasted for years and years and years up until, I guess it was. No, it was at the end of that ninth grade. So that was the pivotal point. But this had happened up from like sixth grade to this point. And I got in so much, I got in a lot of trouble. And um, anyway, your question was, what What was the pivotal point? That was a pivotal point. So that's ninth grade. That was ninth grade. And you went home for the summer and came back in 10th grade. Did anything change? Well, that was a big, that was another 
that pivotal point led to another pivotal point. So, you know, I had gotten so much trouble, not with just the school, but with the law, doing a bunch of different kinds of stuff. And um, my mom had got remarried at at that point, and she got married to a pretty successful guy, and my sister still lived with him. And they lived in this nice neighborhood, and when I'd go over there and visit, maybe once every three or four months, you know, <laughs> I'd go over there with the same attitude as, fuck all y'all. And I'd get there, and, you know, she would see she would see my attitude. And, you know, she would talk to me, but she was like, well, there's nothing really I can do because you're living over there. So I got to the point where um, if I didn't make a change pretty quick, I knew, you know, knew what was going to happen. I was going to be in jail. I'd already been in jail before up at that point, but I knew it wasn't going to go very good. So... One of the times I'd come over there visit during the summer, she's it was at the very beginning, like right when his school left out, let out, and um, I'd go over there and visit. And by this time, they had moved to a farm, and they had all these real expensive horses and stuff. And um, complete contrast to what you're living in. Night and day, night and day. It's a resentment, maybe building up. No, it's like. Not re- well, I, well, okay, there was a little bit of resentment. And the resentment isn't what you think. The resentment was when a Christmas came prior to that summer, you know, the year before. Um, I'd gone over there for Christmas. No, I didn't even go there for Christmas. I'd went over there, and she said, well, here's your present. And I brought it back to my dad's house, and it was this god-awful, ugly, brown and orange fucking sweater, you know. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are millionaires. And, right. And I, I was like— you you could care less how I'm living over here. You get this <clears throat> thing. So, so do you think that your your mom's side was trying to not outdo your dad and make him feel okay about the whole? I never looked at it that way, to be honest with you. I wish she was still alive to me and be able to ask that. What did he say at the time? About what? The sweater. Oh, he was like, oh, that's pretty nice. You know, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you ought to wear that blah, blah, blah. You know, like... He tried to pull a, a spin on it to where it was this cool thing. So I'm like, well, okay, yeah. Uh, so I went in my closet, and I was like, well, maybe I can find something to go with it. And I found these brown choroid pants, <laughs> you know, and the chor- choroids that we were never in. And even then, but, you know, it was brown, and it matched the brown sweater. I'm like, well, hey, this is new, though. You know, this is new shit, so I'll try this out. Hey, that didn't go over, you know, got, got made fun pretty, uh, you know, from that. Any photographs? No. So uh, I don't even think we had a camera. So is dad. your your uh, your dad have the same temperament that you do, or is he? Absolutely not. He was the most mellow guy. Um, well, I see you as mellow now. Okay, now. So how old was your dad then? Is he kind of mm, close to your age now? Well, I'm 52. He was 55 when he passed, and. So 45, he was probably in his late 30s, early 40s when I was living there. So maybe you kind of morphed into him a little bit? Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, I, like I said, I'd visit my mom at the end of that school year, and she, you know, and she was asking me, you know, she seemed like she was a little bit interested in what I was going through. And I kind of like broke down. I was not crying, but I was like, let it all out. First, I remember the first time I cussed in front of her <laughs> was was that conversation. You know, I was saying these people were, you know, blah, 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 doing this and doing that. And she's like, well, did you do anything to provoke them? I'm like, I didn't fucking do a damn thing to these son of bitches. <laughs> and, she, you know, she went back like this. and But she didn't, you know, normally she would have been like, who the hell do you think? You? But she kind of, you know, after the shock, right. you know, and realized the... The intensity that I was putting out, I think she figured out something was majorly right. going on. And um, and I was like, you know, it just doesn't seem like anybody wants to help. You know, I said, you know, I feel like I'm doing you know, this shit on my own, blah, 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 blah. I'm dealing with this and that and whatever. And um, she's like, well, she said, I promise you I will help you to get your life straightened back up. She said, but you're going to have to move here to do it. And when you move here, you're going to have to do what I tell you to do. You know, and if you can't agree to that, just don't even bother coming over here. And so I went home after that weekend of visiting and did a lot of soul searching. And I wanted to. I wanted to so bad to go do that. But I always thought, I'm like, man, I'm going to break my dad's heart. You know, he's going to think that he's a failure. 
And, you know, I don't want to do that to him because he's never done nothing to me, you know. He, he's tried to do good, you know. What happened? So I moved. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did he say? Well, I told him, you know, I got a total re different reaction than what I thought I was going to get. I thought he was going to be like, well, you, you know, you don't have to do that, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, if there's something, I thought it was going to be that conversation. He's like, yeah, you're, you're probably right. <clears throat> you, you, need, you need to change. You need to get out of here. <laughs> so he was wise in that moment, it sounds like. Yeah, because he was not a disciplinarian. Well, what was it like after you moved, and what was your relationship with your dad like? Well, when I moved back with my mom, the whole world changed. Um, I had a friend in that school district that we just happened, <laughs> you know, we we known each other. And um, I didn't really, I mean, I knew him. I didn't know how he was at that school. But when I got to this new school, you know, my mom bought me all the new, before, I mean, I was a brand new kid coming to the school and I had a whole summer to change. Um, So I had saw this guy out in town. I was like, hey, I'm going to be moving to, you know, the school. He's like, hey, man, hey, you're going to be with me, blah, blah, blah. He's like, hey, man, double sessions start up in here in a week. You know, you, you're going to play with us? You know, he's talking about football. I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. Never played a lick of football in my life. And um, he's like, all right, man, you come to the house. You know, cause we're going to start lifting. I got weights at my house and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Not knowing anything about anything. So I go over there. And we just hung out the whole summer, man. And... Every day, if not two or three times a day, we'd be in his basement just lifting weights. I mean, eating as much as we could, and then double sessions start. On, I don't know if you know what double sessions are. Double, you know, two days, two days for about a month. You know, before the the season starts. Well, I shot up about six inches, and I gained probably 35, 40 pounds. And so by that time, I was six three, two thirty five ish, within. About a four month period. So you time. morphed into football player. I morphed into a very angry, aggressive, nobody will ever fuck with me again person. Because you were done with that. Well, I was done getting fucked. Getting getting. And picked this on. was the opportunity to turn the corner. Yep. So I moved in with my mom. She bought me every designer clothes you could think of. Do you have your own room? I have my own room. Um, built me up. To where I, th I I felt good about myself. Confidence. Very, very confident. Did you have the biggest room in the house? Or did you have? Uh, well, by that time, my sisters had moved out. You know, they were they were older than I was. Like I said, four or five years older than I was. So, so it's just you and your mom? Me, my mom, my stepdad, and of course, uncles and stuff. Because we had a farm. You know, it takes a lot of the family to, to run right. a, an operation that size. And it was a pretty big operation. And... um so we had a lot of family members around. You know, my grandpa was there every day. Um, Your mom's dad? Mom's dad, yeah. What was his name? George. George what? George Setters. And was your grandmother still around? She was. <laughs> yeah, me and her didn't get along very well. Old school? I'm just a, des deciding how much I want to go into that. When we were kids. So she had to pick one not to like. It, I, I was not her favorite. I promise you that. Well, why do you think that is? Um, is it specific or she just no, didn't like it? She didn't like a, much of anybody. Oh, so she was she was abusive when I was small. Um, so was she born during the Great Depression? Shit, man, I don't even know. Well, how old? So this oh, is God. this is <laughs> what year is this? Uh. When we were kids, late 70s. So 78, 79, and she's probably... Well, she's dead now, obviously. But, but, um, but at that time... She, she was, was old. 70s, <laughs> so she's born in the 1900s. Well, she wasn't in the 70s back then. She was probably, if I had to Still. guess, late 50s. Okay, so she was born in 1920-something. Maybe. So I they were... Couldn't even tell you. That era of people... Or hard well, to relate to. Well, the guy that she was married to wasn't. He was one of the laid back those dudes you could figure out. Now, if you pissed him off, <clears throat> totally different. You. And rightfully so, because I used to push my limits with that guy. And when it got to the limit, you knew it and you never did it again. <laughs> Maybe with, that's why she didn't like you. No, no, no. With her, it was if, you know, you sneezed wrong. Oh. 
You were getting your ass. That kicked. was she that way with everybody? Just like she was complained with, about everything. Or? She was that with three of the. So I had two cousins that she. It was me and two cousins that she used to watch during the day when my mom would go out for uh, either work or, or school. She was going to college and working at the same time. So tell me that the you three did something to your grandmother. No, we really like, didn't. Like you pissed in her pie or no, something? No, I, I promise you. I would tell you. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem telling so you I was an asshole. So if you could go back in time and do something to fuck with your grandmother, what would it be? And that, that's a little too evil for me to... <laughs> There's got to be a good joke in there. Letting the air out of the tires. Mm. Putting bleach in the laundry. Be a lot worse than that. Mm. Yeah, she would beat us to a point that was uh, unrecognizable sometimes. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> and then when my mom would, or my cousin's mom would come and pick him up, it was always our fault. They they did this, they did that. The response was, hey, you know, you, you, can't, you can't do that around her or whatever. I'm sorry to hear that. <clears throat> but think about... She learned that from somewhere. So some dude. I don't know where, man. Some dude born, some woman well, or man born in the 1850s probably maybe, whooped her ass. Maybe because, you know, my mom nor any of her siblings ever talked about how evil she was ever. Um, but apparently later on in the years when I was talking to my mom about this stuff, way after she was gone, she was like that with them when they were kids. Um so that's weird that she's just a and here's the here here's here's the thing about it she when friends were around or a bunch of family oh, it was all good she was the nicest person most frail oh can you help me with the, you know and just you know she's saving her strength to whip your ass uh, she had lots of strength <laughs> man let me tell you well i got to the point well, how my, tall was she was she like a no, she, big woman no 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 <laughs> no no well, short people are mad all the time. She was frail looking, but we're kids. What am I going to do to my grandma? I'm not, I'm not going to go hit her. But my cousin, the most mild out of all of us. What was his name? Hit his point, Adam. <clears throat> hit a point to where he got fed up with it one day. And he's like, you're going to stop hitting me. And she's like, well, you're going to stop doing she, She's like, don't hit me one more time or you're going to regret it. And she took a belt and just laid it across his back. He got up, went into another room, got a hammer, came out of that room, and threw it as hard as he could right at her. She went like this, and that hammer went right by her head uh, and stuck in the wall. I hate to hear that. I don't. I wish it would have had her. But. That's what I'm saying. I hate to hear that it missed her. <laughs> yeah. Is this a tell me you're from Kentucky without telling me you're from Kentucky kind of thing? Or Well, you know, so all the stories about Kentucky are are not True, the whole inbred, all this, you know, backwoods, blah, blah, blah. It really wasn't like that. Now, if you go down to eastern Kentucky, from like uh, Lexington, about 20 miles north of Lexington on to the east, that's exactly how it is. So, to tie this all in. Yep. I've experienced all this, mm -hmm. but you're now going into 10th grade at your new school, and you're buff and yep. strong and mad yep. because of all this. Mm -hmm. Did smooth sailing or? No. But well, mm -hmm. what about your buddy? One of my best friends to this day, and a matter of fact, we still lived with each other. He was, he, he I still consider him a best friend. Um, you know, he, he saved my life, you know. Um, that year? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just that year, but he was the outspoken, everybody loved that dude, you know, just a super, super good guy. And he kept me on a straight path for the most part, you know. However, I had a rage issue, you know, on the football field and off the football field. Um, you know, when I got on the field, it was just a different person. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to kill anybody. And you were allowed to do that <laughs> you were playing allowed. football in the 70s in you, Kentucky. Well, it wasn't the 70s then. It was the early 80s, like when I was a freshman or freshman, sophomore time frame. So they encouraged all that and you were good and you started? Yeah, but it... it it, um, you know, it went over into other aspects of my life. You know, it didn't stop there. It was out in town. It was whenever I was with my friend, you know, you know walking down the street, somebody looked at you wrong, wrong way, game on. I, no questions. It, it wasn't It wasn't how you see, you know, people like, oh, you got a problem? Oh, you got a problem? And they start it's shoving just, it was, you look at me the wrong way, and it was, I'm, I just went up and I, I 
just whip your ass. I mean, I mean, not even, <laughs> not even question. And and be honest with you, some of my friends were were the same way. I mean, we I I grew up with a lot of badass dudes, man. I mean, just pe- guys that just. So, were there any black guys around? There were a few um, on the team. There were so How did y'all. Yeah, there were a few. We didn't. It wasn't an, even a racist thing back then, which you would think in Kentucky it would be. Um, I guess looking back on it, maybe it was. Maybe, oh, we just don't hang out with them. But it was, you know, they kind of did their thing. We did our thing. It wasn't, and we all, we all got along. When we meet up at parties, was, we would hang out. But we didn't really hang out at each other's house or nothing like that. So, there I guess black that, kids on the team? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, got a lot, got in a... I got in a different kind of trouble. <laughs> so I was a total different um, challenge for my mother. You know, she helped me in every way to build my self-confidence and self-esteem. You went too far. But I went to the exact same thing that I hated. When did you pull out of this? Mm. <laughs> oh, about five years ago. <laughs> um, All right. So this is back up. Yeah. What do you think the reason for all that is? For which part? I mean, being the, aggressive and everything? Yeah, because that is a pretty tried and true emotion based on something that has occurred that you're angry about profoundly. Yeah. That it uh, manifests itself in small ways every day. Yep. Sounds like that's what you were doing. Yep. And you had a support system of football player guys. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? was the actual root of all that. The root of it was making sure nobody ever could put me in a vulnerable position again. Because of you went to your dad's and came back and the grandmother and yeah, all I mean, that. You know, I didn't even really look for a long time that my grandma thing was very traumatic. You know, that was just part of life. It didn't, I don't think that really affected me that much, to be real honest with you. It made me have a, a dislike for her. But it, as far as affecting my life, I don't think it had anything to do with that. The biggest part was, I mean, we're talking three and a half years of nonstop torture. You know, torture. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it, but the way you said it that, was funny. <laughs> it, it is. It, it is funny when you look back, unless unless you're living it. You know, and um, so your stepdad was he? How was he? He was. A, <laughs> what's his name? His his name was Har. Well, it is Harlan. Harlan. Harlan, and he was a uh, was he a peacemaker in the uh, middle, uh, or was he? He just, wasn't even in the middle. He was like, "That's your kid. Hey, I, <laughs> don't even get me involved." Because he knew that he talked to your dad very no, much. So no, they didn't. He didn't want to have, and right, and probably a good thing to be honest with you. Because at that point in my life, if he would have tried anything, he would have got his ass whipped. But I mean, is, uh, so he's significantly older than you, and your dad is significantly older than you. Mm-hmm. Did those men ever talk that you know of? No. Nah. Like, hey, uh, mm-hmm. what do you think about no nope. Bill here? No, nope. no. Nope. He was he was used to my sisters. You know, my 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 not my oldest, but. The one closest to so you were to a complete anomaly. Very yeah. much so. Well, my sister was a hellraiser too, but at that point she was doing her own thing and didn't really, you know, my mom didn't really have any control. So when you're going through all this hellraising period in high school, did mm-hmm. you hear from your sisters? Yeah. And they're like, hey, you got to stop doing this or what's your mm-hmm. problem or nah. stop hating your grandmother? You know. No, so the grandma was totally out of the picture. That was, okay. Yeah. I mean, she. She didn't affect me at all whatsoever, just my childhood. Once I got out of my mom having her babysit me, it was never an issue anymore. Okay. Because it was just family visits for family reunions and stuff like that. So, so she, we're still in 10th grade, and you're yeah. playing football, yeah. raising hell. You're the only kid in the house. Your stepdad's kind of whatever. You talk to your dad occasionally. Mm-hmm. You talk to your mom a lot, or she let you do what you want to do? Oh, no. You work in a job, or... Yeah, and the reason I, you know, got a car and driving, I did, but it was all self, you know, it was all paid for by me, so it was the biggest piece of shit you could think of. But you're self sufficient. Yeah, people are probably looking at you like a badass, right? I mean, who's who's who was a badder dude in town at that point? Not very many, right? So there was one kid. His name was Owen. 
And when I went to that school during that season of growth and, you know, playing football those double season, being very aggressive and realizing that, you know, I'm running over people, I asked my buddy, Steve, I was like, who's the baddest kid in the school? And he's like, oh, that's Owen, man. You don't want to mess with that guy. And so I'm walking and talking to him. And about that time, some I look up and this guy's kind of like walking towards me. And I turn back around and this guy kind of like bumps my shoulder. And I turn back and I, pew, and I slammed him again. I just pushed him, shoved him against the, I'm like, watch where you're fucking going. And I turn back around. I'm talking to Steve. And he's like, yeah, you want to know who Owen is? I'm like, yeah, where is he? He's like, that's the guy you just pushed. I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, okay. <laughs> So now you're the king of the hill. <laughs> so so it, I, I was. I had a very intimidating presence about me. So it didn't even. You have long hair. No, no. Short hair. Yeah, I was all cleaned up at that point. I was Mister GQ so at the time. Your wife is the same age as you, or no? Yeah, she's a little over a year. Okay, older. so she's at this other school other that you used to that go I, to yep. and she's hearing about you no, or she no? could give a shit that's what i was doing okay so y'all hadn't met yet at all oh, no we'd met oh that's a whole different story all right we're getting there okay so you're now a junior and you're playing football mm -hmm. anything change you go to jail during this period you meet well i'd quit football by that time because you know when rules started becoming mandatory I was like, I ain't falling down here all shit, you know? So what was the thing you filled up your time with instead of football? Partying. Drinking? As much or? fun as I could have. So you're this big dude, intimidating, used to be on the football team. Mm -hmm. Now you're partying. Yep. So my, my sole purpose for going to school was to find out where the party was on Saturday or Friday night, you know? And um, it got to the point where they didn't even count me as absent anymore. I would come in at second or third period or whatever I felt like coming in. I'd walk in the middle of class at third period and I'd sit down. Hey, thanks for coming, Bill. Hey, appreciate it. You know. They're just hoping you <laughs> turn into something at this point. They're not, you're not going to get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. So, so my, did you graduate? I did. Um, well, I, my senior year, um, I realized, you know, school, my, the fun times were, because I consider that the fun times. As jacked up as that sounds, I had a great time. I mean, it was it was it was party central. Did you know? Had a lot of great friends and had well, a lot of you good times. going buying beer yourself. Kind Absolutely. Of thing? So, what Absolutely. was your store of choice? Is it still there? Oh, I don't know. Gas station. Type it didn't thing? matter where I went. I looked old enough at that time where you know back then. Yeah. You know, if you went to mom and pop star, like hey, man, good, and there was no ID in There's back no then. Yeah. Charging people after the fact with anything. Nah. Beer, nah. or are you buying liquor? No, nah, I never really got whiskey and moonshine and stuff up there. Yeah, right? I never really got into any of that. It was just purely beer. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Do you, ever, it, do you wreck a car? One time, but it wasn't that bad. And that was... You been in a car wreck that somebody else was driving? No, I was driving. But have you been in one? Uh, Not of any significance. So um, you got out of that somehow. You're kind of going well, to class. I was, at, I was out running the police. Okay. Uh, one of the many times that I had been drinking, partying, and uh, was going home. Did you make it home? Or they get you? Well, after my mom came and got me, yeah. Okay. Well, I got you. <laughs> so. What was she wearing when she showed up? Oh, like, her house know. robe or. She I have no off? idea. Uh, not. You could see the disappointment in her face. Is nope. she tall? Oh, I don't even know if you could consider her tall. Was she your height? No, no. She, she probably or five she... ten. Yeah, she was kind of thin back then. Um, you well, woke she, her ass up to come pick you. Well, up? she showed up with Harlan. You know her, my stepdad. Right. You know, of course, he didn't say a thing. What was he wearing? Oh, I don't know. No I idea. mean, the pajamas or no? I have no idea. At that point, I didn't give a shit about <laughs> oh, anything see. but me, man. Okay, so let me <laughs> rephrase the question: Is there anything? oddly normal that sticks out about that night like was it cold outside was it, it was raining okay, um it was raining. i mean that's about a, it was raining and the guy was on my ass like just the policeman was well i didn't know he was a cop so i mean he was probably a matter of fact the guy i talk about steve we he had dropped his car off at somewhere and i drove to the party and after the party we came back i dropped him off of his car and I started going my way. He went his way. Well, I looked behind me, 
You thought it was him? I thought it was him because he was like six foot away from, and it was pouring out rain. And I'm like, this fucking jackass. Well, I knew my car could outrun him. So I was like, okay. What was it? I had a 78 Camaro and he had some kind of Buick something. <laughs> How do you get a Camaro? Oh, it was a piece of shit. But it was a Camaro. Yeah, but I paid like 400 bucks for okay. it. I mean, I still had a built Did you of, work on it yourself? Kind of? Yeah. You're that guy. Well, I had to be that guy because I didn't have money. To f- guys like you just would throw guys like me down the stairs. No, nah, no, no. So anyway, the guy, was, he was like, it felt like six. I mean, it got to the point where I couldn't see his lights anymore out of my rear view mirror. So I gunned it. I was like, oh, okay, he wants to race. So I, I floored it. And of course, I see the lights getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm like, what was he thinking? He ain't going to beat me. All of a sudden, these lights come up. I'm like, well, when did shit. Steve get cop lights? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm like, well, hell, I'm already in it. I know I can drive way better than this guy because I, I'd raced quite a bit up to that point. And, um, you know, I had a high confidence because I'd outrun police before it up to that point. And, um, <laughs> So I'm laid in it. I'm like, well, there's no reason stopping now, you know, <laughs> because I'm already flooring it, you know, and I was well ahead of him. And so I'm going through all these backwards. I knew all the back roads, you know, very well. And um, I get to a point where there's this hill and it comes down at the end of into the bottom of the hill. It stops and there's another street that's parallel to it. And then on the other side is woods. So I get to the top of the hill, and I'm looking around my rear view mirror. He didn't even see lights. So I'm like, all right, I need to start slowing back. Well, as I start coming down that hill, I'm trying to stop, and it's just sliding. I let off the brakes, hit him again. It was sh- 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 So I'm s- trying to get some traction all the way down this hill, sliding. Well, I go past the stop sign into the woods and hit, hit a tree. Now, not that hard, but when I put but it— But it sucked. But when I hit it in reverse, it wouldn't come out because I was stuck in the mud. <laughs> So my bright idea was like, well, I'm going to get the hell out of here. So <laughs> so I jumped out of the car and uh, I jumped out in the woods and my feet hit water and I hit the creek. And um, by that time he had caught up with me, the lights were on and everything. I'm like, you know what? What's the worst going to happen? And he's like, come out of it, bro. Come out. I'm like, all right, man, whatever. Okay, you got me. So I come out of the woods and I'm like this, you know, just total asshole. My, whatever, man, my hands are up. He's like, put your hands up. I'm like, no, my hands are up. I'm, I'm, I'm being an asshole this cop. And of course, you know, they put me in the car and bring me in. For, so is this the first time you've been in handcuffs? No. 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 So you, you got a little record going now out there. I had quite a record. Yep. Yep. And it was before then, too. It was, you know, it started when I was at my dad's for doing, you know, stupid shit. But this was a different type of law this trouble. Was, so this was the, is this the worst arrest you've had? Or No, no. So before that? After. After yeah. that. So when was that? Ooh. Well, it, at, in high school or? Well was, I think the, it was after I was out of high school, maybe. So you're in going into 12th grade at this point or you're in 12th grade? I'm probably out. Well, so. When I okay, so back when you asked me if I graduated, I did not graduate from that school. I was one credit shy, and it happened to be an English course. And so when everybody graduated, I had all the credits, but one, I, I didn't graduate, so I had to go uh, do a summer school thing from a different high school for one credit. And um, so I got my my actual diplomas from a different school that I went to for <laughs> <laughs> one credit. And then what? So, so does this wrap up the hell raising period, or does it get worse uh, after high school? Well, because that's that's the whole. To summarize, you swapped houses yep. a couple of times. Yep. You're back with your mom. You quit football. Mm-hmm. You're raising hell. You've been arrested. Yep. You graduate high school from your third high school that you went to. Yeah, I guess you could put it like All that. Right, so that is the end of the summer, and you're how old? And what year is it? I was probably 18, so you're 18. around eight, 89 or 90. All right. Yeah, somewhere around there. Don't know if those ages and stuff line up, but somewhere so, around there. So I'm at Auburn at that time. Yep. Just, okay. Which is parallel, kind of weird. So then what? Well, you'd ask you go, me. But you got arrested. You go back to your mom's house and Harlan's not talking to you. <laughs> yeah, or is he I trying mean, to give he, you he, advice? Or? Well, no, he never really did because it's like get this dude out. Of here. Listen, he was a he he. I was an anomaly to him because 
and his lifestyle. Does where, he have kids from another? No, marriage? where he grew up was on a was on a dairy farm up in Wisconsin, and so it was work sixteen hours a day, go to sleep, work sixteen hours a day, go to school, do whatever you're doing, come back, work, 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 and that's how, just how very mellow. You know, you did what you did, and you led your life. And so for me, you know, I was totally out of his realm. He's like, well, who? What the hell is this guy? You know, he had nothing for you. Nothing, nothing. But a very, very, very good guy. Looking back on it, one of the most patient dudes you'll ever meet. And, man. <laughs> you know, uh, your mom is probably has consternation about the situation, and he's got to talk to her about it and bring her down off a ledge a few times. Well. Or was she pissed all the time at you? Oh, I'm sure she was pissed all the time. So did she make you breakfast the next day kind of thing? No. Nah. So you're on your... Everybody went about their I think, business. I think you, she got to a point where she's like, I don't know what else to do. You know, he's just going to do what he's going to do and just deal with the consequences as they came. I think it got to that point. You're lucky she didn't call grandma in at that point. I would have whipped grandma's ass at that point. <laughs> <laughs> grandma you don't had, know, man. Grandma she, she's been coming. dormant for five mm, or six years. No, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been good for her. You know, she's not as good as she once was, yeah. but what? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it got to, like I said, it got to the point where I think she didn't, I don't think she gave up on me. I mean, of course she, you know, wished the best and tried the best, but it was like talking to the wall, you know? So are you having any self-reflection at this point? Or are you... At that point? No. Yeah, like you, you just, so you got tossed in jail for this Camaro chase. There's days and months and weeks after that that you're staying at your mom's house. Mm -hmm. You have a job? Yeah, well, I had lots of jobs, and like I said, that was the only that was my party money because my mom wasn't giving me nothing. So you, you know? go to court, and what happens? Nothing. You know, nothing. Another thing on your license. So did you ever go to jail for any of this? Long time? No. You got tossed in there. A couple yeah. Of them. Right. So it was no, like overnight thing. You haven't been sentenced to anything. No. So, no. So you, there was it, one thing that I should have been, and it got to that point, but um, got out of that. Fortunately, after this. Yeah. Okay. So. That's where I'm going with this. So you're out of high school at your mom's mm -hmm. house working out jobs. Got a record. Mm -hmm. You have any self-reflection? You're just going to keep doing the same stuff? What What's the next big thing? Yeah, so looking back on it now, looking back on it, it was a very self-conscious person, very insecure guy. Didn't know what to do with his life. You know, I always thought I was better than what I was doing but didn't know how to do it, you know? I knew I was smarter than my friends, you know? I know that sounds arrogant or whatever. But you didn't have the scores to back it up kind of thing? Right, because I didn't give a shit. It's a weird... School was boring to me. I mean, they would try to teach you something like that. I know this, this, is, this is... I ain't wasting my time with this. And um, so didn't didn't have a real direction of what I wanted to do the rest of my life. All I knew was I was going to be a freaking bum, and that sent me farther down the rabbit hole of I'm going to just do whatever I want to do until something changes, you know, which was very, you know, a lot of undisciplined. You know, you would think, you know, I would think looking at somebody like that, that, well, you have to have a lot of discipline to be, you know, doing this and doing that and, you know, doing what you did in football and stuff. And But looking back on it, I was extremely undisciplined, you know. <laughs> just did what I want. Well, football was an outlet for – being mad. Very short. Yeah. yeah. And so these are outlets for. Yeah. So something in the near future after you graduated high school, something happened to change the course. Yeah. What was it? Absolutely. There's a short answer and a long answer. I'll give you the short answer. It, it was my wife. There's a longer answer there, but I've known my wife since I was about five years old. <clears throat> and, um, you know, she wouldn't have nothing to do with me. She was the popular cheerleader girl. You know, in the high school I was at, and I was the punk kid, you know, causing trouble, hoodlum, blah, 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 blah. You know, and if I was her, I wouldn't, wouldn't have anything to do with me either. But um, when I went to this new school, had this growth spurt and whatever, um, she had came, you know, her mom and my mom were very good friends. Okay. And um, they worked together. At a, they were both nurses. And um, Your mom was a nurse. Mm-hmm. So she worked with, you know, her, actually my wife's mom was my mom's boss. She was the head nurse. And um, 
a lot of the times during, you know, every year they do. So there's a, a lot of talk going on about what you're doing at all times. Oh, I'm sure. Because they, Cause they, they go friends. to work yeah. and they talk oh, about. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Why'd you call in late today? Well, Bill, Dennis <laughs> Camaro. And, yeah. yeah. All right. So, like I said, the, the short story is me and her, she'd come over to my mom's house and we ended up talking and getting together. And we were together for about a year, um, split up for a short amount of time, and then got back together. And when we got back together, um, I was always looking at short term, you know, what are we doing tomorrow? What are we doing tomorrow? Well, she came up and she's like, hey, you know, I love you. She's a but, you know, something's got to change. You know, if we're going to make a life together, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, life together? What's what, the what? first time you heard that? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> where were, okay, so where were you guys sitting? Oh, I'm sure it was at my mom's house, probably. You know, outside, you have a porch type thing? Or no, that was probably steps. inside somewhere, probably in my room or whatever. But she brought this up. Yeah. And um, she's like, you got to do something. Well, at the time, I was working at a, a construction company. And, of course, you know, making pretty good money for 18-year-old kids. It seems like it's a career path. Not really, because I hated it. Okay. I mean, I could do anything. I could pour footers, pour concrete, you know. Well, to her, did that seem like a career she wanted for you? I don't think she gave a shit what I was doing. She just wanted you to be okay. She just wanted me to have some kind of <laughs> future, <laughs> you know. And, you know, she probably knew just as well as I did that that wasn't it. I got you. And, um, yeah, that's what I was getting at. You're working a, another physical hard job. Yeah. Yep. And um, In rural Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You, well, it wasn't rural. So, Northern Kentucky, so we're like 20 minutes south of Cincinnati. Right. A place called Florence Union area. And um, I'm, so, just, I'm just kind of painting the pictures. Like, here you are, this past, and you've leveled out a little bit. Yeah. Working a construction job and got the girl of your dreams. Mm -hmm. Not, and that's did, true. <laughs> so, is it going? So, I thought about her since I was five years old. So, that's, that's a longer story. But anyway, yeah, you're on the right path. Go ahead. Okay. So what happens first? You change jobs and careers or you guys well, get together? Or So it got to the point where she never said it, but I knew there was a point where she was... Not going to deal with it anymore. She was ready to find different avenues, you know. And so a couple of my friends had got out. Uh, when As soon as they got out of high school, they went to the Marine Corps. And when they went to the Marine Corps, they always tried to get me... Man, you you need to come in with us. I'm like, you guys are fucking stupid. You are going to have some dude yelling at you? That, you know, hell no. Am I going to do that? There's no way. And I always thought that they were trying to get, tell me how great it was because they had to be getting something out of it. You know what I mean? That's what I thought. I was like, okay. Did they really? Did they? Did it turn out that they knew that you would be good at it? Probably because they, they were good friends. You know, I don't think they. You know, looking back, I don't think they said that to try to get anything. Now, you do get some points for your, you know, to promotions, but I know that they would not have said that. If they didn't mean it. If they didn't mean it. But I was like, okay, you guys are full of shit. Like, you know, that's just not only. So, you're still in good shape, good enough to go in the Marines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was benching 325 back then. So, you're still lifting weights and stuff. Yeah. So, you go talk to a recruiter? No. Well, <laughs> so... Um, it got to the point where I'm like, I got to make something happen. So my first thing was the Air Force. I'm like, well, I'm not going to have some guy yell at me all the time. So it seems like the Air Force is probably the... the Co college the, was never a thing. Well, it was. So we're talking about a bunch of different subjects here. So back in back in my senior year in high school, when I I knew I was going, I needed to do something, I went to my uh, the little counselor people that they right. talked to you about your future and everything. And so I went in there, you know, she's like, uh, hey, Bill, what's going on? Because, you know, <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? I'm like, well, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, what I what I should be doing. She's like, well, what are some of your interests? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, my mom's in the medical field. You may be a doctor or something, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, Bill, we have to set our goals to be realistic. <laughs> and blah, blah. No if and I'm like... Fuck you. I mean, I know some doctors. Uh, they ain't no damn... I didn't say that, but in my mind, I'm like... You're the you, dumbest doctor I know. Isn't your fucking job to guide me and help me do... I think she was being truthful, though. Oh, I could have done it. Looking back on it now, yeah, I could have done it. And if... 
I'm not blaming anybody else for anything. That's not going to fit. But she could have had a profound impact on my life if she would have just taken about 10, 15 minutes. But. I'm not even saying doctor. I'm saying to guide me into something that was. But you would not have reached the crossroads with your future wife if you'd have gotten. She gave you a straight answer. Hey, listen, man. Everything happens for a reason. Right. I never believed that. So forget the college thing. You are you have to do something, and you're thinking about the Air Force. Yep. Went you, to the Air Force, talked to those guys. And, you know, he looked at my school record. He's like, yeah, you know, we're probably going to have to go. He said, have you ever smoked marijuana? I'm like, well, yeah. He's yesterday. like, well, we're going to have to have a waiver for that. And I'm like, well, okay. And um, so he's like, well, let me see what I can do. So a month or two go by and I go up there and talk to him. And he, he was just all wishy-washy about everything. I'm like, man, I need to do something. My girlfriend's getting ready to leave me. <laughs> he's like, I need to get off your ass. And I need to figure something out. And so I was, and it was a very similar situation to to my son. It was almost a mere thing. But I was walking out of the Air Force recruiting office, walking back to my car, and a Marine Corps dude, and the Air Force guy wasn't there that day. And uh, the Marine guy comes out and he's like, hey, man, there's something I can help you with. And in my mind, I'm like, fuck no, you can't help me. You know, you're probably the thing I need to hear. I'm like, nah, I was waiting for the Air Force guy. And I figured if I said the Air Force guy, he'd be like, okay. Whatever. And he's like, well, hey, man, that dude's never here, man. Hey, if you got any, got any questions about anything or anything, just let me know. Hey, once you get, what, what are you looking for? And I was like, man, listen, I'm already committed to there. You know, I'm trying to get in the Air Force. But he's like, no, I'm not trying to get you in by anything. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm like, well, you know, I'm trying to. Well, that started the conversation. Well, two hours later, here I am coming back, <laughs> going back to Kerry. Guess what? I leave for boot camp in like three months or two months or whatever it was. And she was ecstatic. She was, I mean, I had talked something about the military, but we never talked about if she would go. So or it was not. kind of out of the blue to her a little bit. A little bit. Did like y'all a, go to dinner or anything? Oh shit, man! I don't remember. <laughs> I, have no, I, I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> you just I, joined I, the Marines. I knew she was happy about it. Whether she was happy with herself being part of that, I don't know. Did y'all get but married she, before you left? No, but I know she was happy that I had some kind of direction of what I was going to be doing. I know she was happy about that. And and she knew, from what I know now, that you can do difficult and you can do hard. And the Marines are difficult and hard. Yeah, and I had no idea about anything military. Clueless. Didn't know rank structures. Didn't know the difference between officer and listed. Didn't know... And did, did no jobs. I thought a Marine was a Marine. And you, 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 so so the, the, the car you drove to that last recruiting visit was what? That Camaro that you No, I had a 87 Jeep CJ5 or CJ7, or whatever that was that year. 87. Was it strip mall or in the mall? No, they had like their own little complex. So they had a building with all the recruiters. And when you told her, was it at your house or? No, I went to her house. Her house. house. Yeah. But she lived in a different school district. How far she was did. that? Uh, maybe 15 miles. Oh, not bad. Yeah. That was the next county over. Good time for a timeout. Yep, let's time out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know any of this? Have you heard all this before? Oh, felt special there for a second. Are we live? We're, we're always live. Maybe. Okay. So to summarize. So yeah, so we're back and uh, we're going to summarize this up. And but let me Tell me if I'm right. Okay. So... You're having a great childhood. You go to your dad's. <laughs> but, but before you oh, yeah, moved yeah, to yeah. your dad's. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Before you moved to your dad's, yep. you were good. Yep. So that was a big decision. Yeah. That that whole it, go to your dad's thing. Yeah. Started some of the back and forth, different family members. And you responded by getting big and strong and mad about everything with no, nowhere to put any of this. And, but you're still working. Mm -hmm. You're still working on cars. You always have a car. You always have a job. You always have friends, but you always have trouble. Yep. And you ran afoul of the law a few times. A couple of times, yep. And the girl you're crazy about indirectly. Put an ultimatum. Gives you an ultimatum. <laughs> yep. Did she ever say, you have to do something or I'm out of here? Or is... It was implied. Right. I was about to say, she, <laughs> from what I have known of her mm -hmm. talking to her, she would not have to come out and say something like that because 
her presence in your life. And the lack of that presence permanently is enough of a motivation for you to figure it out on your own. And you did. Yep. And you're knocking on the Air Force's door, and that didn't happen. So another pivot point over to the guy in the parking lot for the Marines. Do you remember his name? Nope. So whoever that guy is has changed his life. He doesn't even know it. Yeah. So He, he lied, too, about some stuff. But anyway... <laughs> it justifies the means. Right. I, I'll just go on record to say that anybody that's a Marine, I, I can't even fathom how badass uh, of badassery that is. Well, I can tell you. All my you, Marine friends, I'm just like, oh, God. When you come out of the Marine Corps, you are at the top of your I wouldn't say physical because they break you down pretty good. I mean, they start building you up towards the end, but you're broken down so good. You're not in your best, at least I wasn't. I wasn't in my best physical shape, but my mind had totally changed. Totally. Like The Marines are the baddest dudes in the whole world. Ask me. Yeah. So, because we're going to have a part two. We're going to have a part two. Yep. Is there anything that you left out of your high school <laughs> proclivity for chaos that you would care to share? I mean, that's another part two in itself, to be we're, honest with you. We're, we're wrapping it up. So this is your only right. chance. To yeah. So we'll get that. We'll get, we can go into more of that in part two. But I think the one thing that we're trying. Well, well so that's a good question. Let me interrupt you. Have you, you've joined the Marine Corps, you've told your, your future wife, this is what you're going to do. You haven't deployed yet. You got three months. Did it feel like all that was behind you now that you were, you were looking forward? So a little bit, I was a lot happier that I had some kind of direction. Now I didn't know if I was going to keep up with it. I didn't know if I was going to punch one of these guys in the face when they yelled at me. But in this three months that you're waiting to go to boot camp. Mm -hmm. Were you repeating some of the same things? No, no, no. I felt I felt like I had a reprieve. Right. I'm like, okay, I got three months to kind of do whatever I want. You know what I mean? But I don't need to get in trouble because it'll affect me going in. So I, th I felt like I had a three-month period to where I could still be with my future wife for that three months. What happened after that, I wasn't too sure. But, hey, for these three months, I made her happy. She's not on my ass anymore. But you <laughs> so. had sort of a straight and narrow mindset a little bit because you knew that if you got arrested again you weren't going oh, yeah. to the Marines right. yeah well at that point I was out of you know when I got back with her and we were dating I was out of the what now out of the partying scene as much but I was out of the hanging out with friends and just doing whatever the hell we wanted now there were times I were, was out with her and some of her friends and my friends where things were sideways, my ass showed because somebody said the wrong thing or they looked at my girlfriend the wrong way, or you know, and I had to make sure that that never happened again. And you know, back then when you're young, she probably looked at that as, oh, he, hey, he's a protector, you know, you know, she didn't really. And even when those things happened, she didn't see the real, it was a quick, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take care of this and it's over with. She never, she never saw the real rage that I really had. <laughs> Ever, not to not to the extremes. She's she's yes, she's seen the so good, bad, and the ugly. The good, bad, and ugly. But so the moral of the story is she's still around. Yes, so, and that's where we're going with all yeah. this. It's like this circuitous route that we're on yep. to get to today. Yep. So we're gonna put a stamp on this because you graduated high school. You've really done the worst stuff that you've ever done. Is that? Fair to say? Mm. As far as derailing your life? Yes. Okay. So do you, some of that anger is put in a suitcase kind of? And no. Is, no. It's, it's. You've, you've got another. So, uh, you know, I know we're going to part two. <laughs> but I think you're way more interesting than I am. But the, but the, but the Marine Corps <laughs> changed, changed my life. All right, we'll leave it at we'll that. And we'll leave it at that. Good. All right, snap. <laughs>